Kirby and I discovered a game and we're freaking out about it. Treasure Quest Fine Fest 3. This game is unreal. Players wander around as digital pirates in order to move their digital boats across digital landscapes to discover digital treasure hidden at real, not digital, GPS coordinates. Find anything yet? Nope, but I found a chicken. <laughs> It is so fun. But it drains your phone's battery like crazy, so we can't play right now. Major bummer. But we were wondering, what if... Maybe. With a little paper and glue... And a few library books. We found out how to bring Treasure Quest Find Fest 3 to life. So today, we're unraveling the world of... Sunken Treasure. All right, guys, kind of weird. But true. It turns out if you want to know anything about pirates and sunken treasure, you got to know about Spain. España. Country of the siesta. And tapas. Flamenco dancing. And apparently treasure and pirate history. That's where it all began. All right, Spain, here we go. Let's take it back a bit. 1492, Columbus gets some funding from Spain, discovers the new world. Spain's a powerhouse now. They throw together some funding, build a boat, and head out to establish some colonies over there. They have quite a nice collection by the 16th century. Quite a nice collection. The great thing about these new colonies is they're rich with gemstones and gold and silver and pearls and emeralds and everything treasure related. Spain, of course, wants to get in on that. So they sail over and start trading with the colonists, bringing back all of that treasure. For a while, this goes well. The colonists get resources, Spain gets treasure, until some of the countries get a little jealous. One of the most jealous guys, King Francis, the King of France. Wait, that was his name? Yeah, King Francis. The King of France? Exactly. So the king was like, these Spanish kings, they have the nicest jewels, but they won't let me trade with their colonies. Whatever shall I do? Sorry guys, my French accent is pretty bad. Upset by the fact that he and his country are mostly treasureless and additionally frustrated because Spain won't let them trade with the Spanish colonies, King Francis decides to take the low road. You, sir. Yes, King Francis? Will you do me a favor? What is it? Sail to the ships that carry Spanish treasure and take it. Take what? Take the treasure, the ships, everything. It will be your job and I will call you a privateer. Privateer? Yeah, they're pirates. The French government hired pirates to steal treasure from the Spanish. They just called them privateers, probably to make themselves feel better about the whole thing. All right, got it. And it works. With the help of these privateers, the French and other countries are able to steal treasure from the Spanish. Oh, we did it! Wee oui, wee! Oui. But Spain wasn't just going to take the hit lying down. No way. They respond in full force. It's King Philip II of Spain who's behind this one. Man, these French, they're killing us. Sorry guys, my Spanish accent is much worse than my French. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get a bunch of boats. We're gonna make them big, give them pistols, cannons. We're giving them everything. We're gonna have two of them. They're gonna sail together, bring back the treasure, and we're gonna be rich. So Spain creates two treasure fleets, the Tierra Firma and the New Spain. There's a whole bunch of boats, up to 90 in the whole group. They're big, they have cannons, and they're ready to get some treasure and fight off the privateers. For 250 years, the Spanish send these fleets to the New World, trading for gold, silver, emeralds, pearls, all sorts of precious metals and gemstones, immense amounts of riches, equivalent to hundreds of millions of dollars today. But the thing is, not all of the treasure made its way back to Spain. What the heck? Where'd it go? The treasure was stolen, some of it by pirates, some of it by privateers hired by countries like France. The French, we cannot be stopped. Yeah, but pirates weren't really the biggest issue for Spain. There was something even more devastating than pirates and more fearsome than the French. So creepy. The most terrifying thing to the Spanish treasure fleet was Mother Nature. Specifically hurricanes, in 1715 a hurricane hits the treasure fleet. 11 Spanish ships sink to the bottom of the ocean. The Spanish try their best to rescue some of the sunken treasure, but after many salvage attempts, half of the treasure never makes it back to Spain. It remains on the ocean floor. 18 years later, 1733. Mother Nature strikes again. Another hurricane hits the treasure fleet off the coast of Florida, destroying nearly all their ships. 
Hundreds of years pass and all that treasure, millions in gold and silver and precious jewels, sit on the ocean floor, just waiting to be discovered. This is what modern day treasure hunters are looking for. These sites where ships from the treasure fleet sank during hurricanes. When we imagined a modern day treasure hunter, we thought maybe it would be someone that looked like this. But to our surprise, they probably look a little more like this. Scuba divers looking for treasure underwater. And you might be thinking it would be impossible to find sunken treasure. The ocean is huge. How are they gonna find a single sunken ship? Well guys, the crazy thing is some ships have actually been found. Wrecks from the 1715 and 1733 Spanish treasure fleets have finally been discovered by divers. But if you want to hear about a truly incredible discovery, you got to hear the story about the Atocha Motherlode. The Atocha Motherlode. It all starts in 1622 when the Nuestra Señora de Atocha, a member of the Tierra Firma treasure fleet, is sailing along the Florida coast. A hurricane hits, wind is whipping, waves are crashing, the Nuestra Señora de Atocha goes down with all of its treasure. Fast forward over 300 years to 1968. Mel Fisher, an Indiana chicken farmer, believes he can find sunken treasure off the Florida coast. So he goes looking. Mel looks for 16 years, 16 years! And just when everyone is sure that he's crazy, the unthinkable happens. On July 20th, 1985, Mel's searching off the coast of Florida when he finally stumbles across an old shipwreck. It's the Nuestra Señora de Atocha! After 16 years and thousands of dives, he discovers the Atocha Motherlode. The total treasure, 40 tons of gold and silver, 100,000 silver coins, gold coins, Colombian emeralds, jewels of all kinds, and 1,000 silver bars. The value of the treasure, over $450 million. Hey, Curb, I think we're ready to go. Oh, yeah? We know what we're looking for. Treasure from the Spanish treasure fleet. We know where to look. Roughly off the coast of Florida. We got to scuba dive some rocks. I say we give it a shot. Absolutely. Pack up our gear and head on out. Let's do it. All right, guys, we got to pack up a few things and we'll be ready to rip, all right? Sounds good. We'll see you in a bit. Weird but true, the sound of crashing waves comes mostly from bubbles. Ah, perfect. Hey, guys. We just finished up packing. We're heading down to Florida to explore some real-life sunken treasure. And we know the perfect guy to help us out. Carl Fismer. This guy is a living legend. He's led salvage expeditions across the entire world, and he's an expert at the Spanish treasure fleet. Carl's a real-life treasure hunter, so we got to meet him. Come on, let's go. We're heading down to the Florida Keys, the islands. The Florida Keys are home to the southernmost point in the United States. Who are we here to meet? This guy, Captain Fismer. Captain Fismer worked on the Atocha Motherlode wreck, the 1715 and 1733 sunken treasure fleets, and he recovered millions of dollars in Spanish artifacts over 30 years. Captain Fismer's favorite weird but true fact, a group of jellyfish is called a smack. Hey guys, it's Captain Fizz. He's the real deal. We should go say hi. Come on, let's go. Come aboard. Captain Fizz, I'm Charlie. Hey, good to meet good you, Charlie. Nice to meet you. I'm Kirby. Kirby, nice good to meet you, young guys, lady. Guys, Captain Fizz, Captain Fizz, guys. Fizz will do. Today we're talking about Spanish treasure fleet, treasure, diving, and apparently you're the guy to talk to, is that right? My favorite stuff. I was just on my way out to one of the galleons that sank in the year 1733. Can we come along with you? Well, I was just about to say that. Why don't we do that? Yeah, perfect. Why do you like treasure hunting so much? Is it the history? Is it the thrill of finding the thrill? it? thrill? What is it? It's the thrill and it's the history. This is some of man's earliest footprints in the new world, and mm -hmm. that's what these galleons are. What's the story behind this guy right here? This came from the wreck of the Conception that sank in the year 1641. We've only brought up less than 2%, less than 2%. Wow. Of the treasure? Yes. Holy cow. That's weird but true. They still think 98% of the sunken treasure is still on the ocean floor. So what are your odds of finding the rest of it, you think? That's weird too. <laughs> it's doable. It's very expensive and you have to get permission from different countries. It's difficult, it's complicated, but... You get the permission, I'll go chase the treasure. Let's roll. 
Captain Fizz tells us the shipwrecks around the Florida Keys are now protected sites, which means they're like underwater museums. So the stuff we find on site here has to stay here. But visiting an ancient Spanish wreck site is still the thrill of a lifetime. It's good weather out. It's a good day for treasure diving. It always is. Looks like we're here. Yeah, we are here. It's a little bit rough today, but... It looks a, a lot a bit rough today. What site are we at right now? This is called the El Infante. El Infante, also known as the Nuestra Señora de Belvenida, was one of the largest ships in the 1733 fleet and carried up to 60 cannons. What do we expect to find here? Well, you're not going to see a Spanish galleon with the sails flapping, but what there is, there's timbers left here, and there's ballast rocks left here. Back in those days, they filled the bottom up with high, smooth stones and keeps it stable in the water. So the wreck's old, so we're not going to see a ship down there, but we'll see pieces of a ship, right? Yes, you'll see pieces. Now, I'm not saying it's old, but George Washington was only one year old when this boat sank. So it'll Video. It's a little low. So we're looking for ballast stones, we're looking for timber, and we're looking for treasure. Let's do it. Welcome, guys. We made it. Hey, Curve, how you doing? This is amazing. Come on, let's see what we can find. I think I understand why it went down. These waves are pretty nuts. We found our first day, guys. What are we looking at, Charles? These are pieces of timber. from the Spanish treasure fleet. We were holding them in our hands. Timbers, I was touching it, I was holding it. That was a piece of treasure history right there. There was a cannon down there. Cannons, there's Crazy. loads of stuff. Fortunately, there's no treasure though. No gold. No gold. I feel like when we catch up with Captain Fizz, he can show us some of his stuff. Does that sound like a good idea? Absolutely. All right, we obviously got to whip out of these wetsuits super quick, but we're gonna catch up with him and we'll see you there to see all his treasure. Sound good? Let's do it. Sounds good to me. We'll see you in a few minutes. Weird but true, legend says that pirate treasure may be buried near the Statue of Liberty. We found We just got up from our dive where we found sunken ships from the 1733 Spanish treasure fleet. Now we're gonna meet up with Captain Fizz and he's gonna show us treasure he's collected over the years. Some of it from his own dives before the wrecks became protected. Like the one we just saw. Sound good? Let's go check it out. We found it, it's a treasure! Fizz, I'm not gonna lie, this doesn't look as kind of sparkly and shiny as I thought it was gonna be. That was a pistol butt from a flintlock pistol. 
The wooden handles rotted away and so it came off. The rest of the pistol's pretty much intact. This is pretty nice. That was a candle holder. It's oxidized quite a bit. How old is it? This was from the Conception, 1641. Jeez. Whoa. When we pick up silver coins, they almost always look like this. They'll have incrustation on them. And if they're white and have a touch of green, that means they might be in good condition. When they're completely black like these, that means don't even bother cleaning them. So when you go down and you find treasure, it's not like you're finding a big old box spilling with pearls and emeralds. You're right, it's not like that. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's like that. Is it more kind of like this? Is that what we're looking at? That is a lock. This lock was salvaged from an English ship. There was nine boxes of uh, silver coins, and this was the lock that was holding one of the boxes tightly shut. How about this guy over here? The half a cannonball thing. That's, That's pretty thing. cool. How does it, a cannon fall break in half? These holes is where chain was put in it. And then if the other half of the cannon ball was here, the chain would loop around and hook into that. Oh, that's a nasty cannonball. Yeah, ball. so when that shot out the end of the barrel, it opened up and it whoop, whoop. You don't want to be standing there when this comes flying past. Mm. And what makes this one really nice, it's made out of bronze. This is an interesting piece. It's from the wreck of the USS Alligator, very nice. historic ship. This is actually a bronze nail. The USS Alligator ran aground and they couldn't get it off, so they blew it up. And that's what caused the big bend in it. Check it out. The USS Alligator was an 86-foot Navy schooner launched in 1820 that became part of a fleet called the West Indies Squadron. The squadron was sent to combat piracy off the coast of Florida. But the alligator ran aground in 1822. Here, in what's known as Alligator Reef, and had to be scuttled to prevent pirates from salvaging it. And Fizz has a weird but true fact. This bike came from Paul Revere's original foundry. Whoa. Yeah, the alligator was built in Boston Harbor, and Paul Revere had the government contract to supply all the nails and sheeting and stuff. Is anything here from the Spanish treasure fleet? Uh, yeah, these right here. That, in fact, uh, the, that's from the 1733 fleet right there. It's a coin stuck to an iron spike. Oh, I wow. just don't have the heart to take it off. <laughs> it looks so nice. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. remember where you found these coins? Yeah, this is from the Conception. These are Atocha coins. Mm -hmm. These are from the mother load? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are from the mother load? <laughs> we got a piece of the mother load! Oh, nice. dude, that's unreal. This one? Yes, it is. I feel like I gotta just touch this. <laughs> so what are you looking for when you get down there? Ideally, what would you find? You want a piece that's probably preserved perfectly, right? Are you looking for silver or are you looking for something that probably looks like that? Gold is good and that's really the best thing you can find on a wreck. And I would say gold coins because, you know, they're small, they're lightweight. They're in at least as good a condition as when they sank most of the time. They don't deteriorate like silver does? No, no. Gold's not toxic. Weird but true fact, gold doesn't deteriorate like silver does. Silver rusts away underwater, but gold, that coin that you found, is going to look just as good the day you find it as the day it dropped down to the ocean floor. So how hard is it to find this treasure? Well, it's pretty hard to find that treasure these days. However, I've recently started getting my kicks off of this game, Treasure Quest Find Fest 3. No way! You play that game too? I'm a level 43 Blackbeard. 43? <laughs> That's right. That's so good! I'm chasing this digital wreck in 300 feet, so... I have to kick you out. Don't worry, Fizz. You totally understand. Get you got to get, get those digital racks. That's right. All right, guys, we're going to head out. But we'll see you in HQ in five. Awesome. Sounds good. Fizz, Fizz. thanks so much for helping us out Adios. today. We'll see good you luck soon. catching those racks. We'll see you later. Weird but true, dolphins can hear sounds underwater that are 15 miles away. Hey, guys. We just got back from the Keys. 
It's good weather out. It's a good day for treasure diving. It always is. So awesome. How about Carl, man? What a legend. We learned so much today. We found out that the Spanish treasure fleet carried millions of dollars of jewels and precious metals to Spain. Sometimes they were attacked by pirates, and the French hired privateers to capture some of their ships. We will take their treasure! But hurricanes and storms were the most trouble for the Spanish. And now that divers have found some of these Spanish wrecks, governments have turned them into protected historical treasures, preserving an amazing window into the past. What else did we learn today? There were so many weird but true things. George Washington was one year old when the Ellen Fonte sank in 1733. One man spent 16 years and thousands of dives searching for sunken treasure before he found the Nuestra Señora de Atocha wreck. Silver rots away underwater, but gold doesn't. What a day, Kerb. What a day. Phone 100% charged. Heck yeah, back in action. Treasure quest fine fest three time. We gotta catch up to Carl. He's a level 43 Blackbeard. I'm a level 36 Master Gunner. What, I'm a level three cabin boy. Catch up, man. All right, we gotta go find some digital wrecks, but thanks for stopping by. Pop in again when we discover more things that are weird but true. There's one in the front yard. No way, wait up. See you later, guys.